So the next presentation is uh, basic functionality capabilities and future development to be delivered by Dmitry Kashurgin, head of technical support development, Rakhus Russia. Dear colleagues, friends, the subject of my presentation is quite traditional. I deliver a similar report uh, at each conference, be it me or somebody from my support team. It is true, the evolution of photo mode in the past uh, year and where we are headed is what I talk about. But for this conference, we decided to provide some general remarks regarding Photomod because uh, a lot of people here may not be too familiar with the uh, Photomod. I'll try to be keep it short and sweet here. We can see the uh, product line of uh, what Photomod sells, I mean software. First of all, it's Photomod per se, digital uh, photogrammetry system which addresses, which addresses a uh, series of photogrammetric tasks. What can I do? There is no slide on. I have it here in uh, three copies, but the, the main copy is missing, it appears. We can see everything here. Things are good here. Anyways, any who see it, whether we see it or not. Okay. A digital photogrammetry system photo mod with all of its modules. These modules uh, are for the sake of uh, price lists, but they take care of uh, triangulation, uh, stereo links, uh, radars, but there is a number of separate projects. Uh, Photomod Geo Mosaic, which works, can work separately uh, from Photomod, plus there is a free a uh, photomod geo calculator used for conversion, a photomod light free of charge copy uh, with uh, uh, capacity limitations, a stereo link, radar, that's a totally uh, separate uh, module to process uh, radar imagery and uh, scan correct. We used to have this wonderful program to calibrate uh, household uh, scanners. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, the core version of Photomod. I think uh, most of you know how it works. On the right you see the output, on the left you see the input. So on the output side you see digital maps, uh, ortho mosaics, 3D models that can be imported into GIS systems, exported into GIS systems. These are main functions which I have already covered, in fact. Plus, we are heading uh, towards full automation whenever possible from block layout to aerial triangulation, DTM extraction and orthomosaic uh, seam lines and uh, color balancing. And a few slides to illustrate my points. This is how a project looks when launched, if there are external orientation components available. So all the images are uh, collected into block layout. Then automatically two points are being measured. But still, you'll have to you know, complement that uh, with uh, manual in interventions if you do not trust onboard data which has a certain element of inaccuracy attached to them. Then bundle adjustment, DEM, digital elevation model generation, and ortho mosaic with uh, uh, map sheets. This is what happens at photo mode automatically. There is also a stereo vectorization module, which is a strictly manual module, but it does have a few automatic features as well. Oh, 
so as far as the our accounting period is concerned, I mean the conference to conference uh, period, what changed? We made further advances in uh, UAV uh, applications for triangulation. Uh, we now can use DTM for satellite images uh, block adjustment, which we will cover during master classes. Cloud's searching tool is a new newly added uh, feature plus EGM 2008 support, uh, Pleiades imagery support. Uh, we continue to disseminate more distributed processing. Uh, we have now a few new functions uh, supporting a three source frames. That's how I called them. Again, you can uh, check all of this out uh, during our master classes. Uh, standard deviation option in auto levels uh, tool for radiometric correction of 16 bit images. Flexible background processing when doing ortho mosaic. We have the 3D mod module developing quite extensively. It is used for 3D modeling and now it has uh, features uh, for uh, animation and uh, a few other functions uh, for your convenience. Uh, filtering uh, block images based on roll and pitch angle values that's uh, relevant for UAVs. Uh, teen interpolation in order to build smooth uh, contour lines. Support of JP2000 files over 2 gigabytes and using templates for vectorizing roofs. Again, when you visit our master classes, you will be able to, s to check out this stuff. And a few slides to illustrate what I mentioned earlier. This is the orthophoto generated uh, from UAV acqu acquisitions. If you have a lot of images, these are mostly uh, images taken by satellite at different points in time. You, some of them have high cloud level, the others have no clouds. During the first flight, the algorithm finds clouds and all images, and then it analyzes uh, what is under the, under the clouds on the other image. So if there are no clouds, then it adds the cloud from the previous image, and this is how it uh, uh, builds uh, cut lines uh, to generate the ultimate um, ortho orthophoto. Uh, we can see seam lines uh, here f from overlaps. This one here, it does rotate. This is a, a product animation uh, made using our tools. In fact, these clips were available in the previous PhotoMod version, but now uh, they come equipped with uh, more convenient tools that allow uh, using uh, different angles and directions. I think I should click the Enter one more time. Uh, this illustrates another f another feature or levels for 16-bit images when you load such uh, onto the project. Uh, there are a lot of them here, how you do these sort of levels. And the standard deviation is something that we consider to deliver the uh, best results. So this is our by default setting, or at least it should be. Uh, these are the templates for roof uh, vectorization. The idea is quite clear. Uh, there is a uh, set of uh, templates. I select a template and I begin vectorization not point by point, but by uh, creating the whole roofing. Again, all of this will be available during the uh, master class. And this is the final slide where we're headed, uh, what our prospects 
uh, photomod users must be aware of our first item here, full 64-bit system version. This is a long-anticipated move, but uh, we couldn't uh, get around to it. But now we uh, keep our eyes on the ball here and really try to drive this change. Uh, a new uh, d dense uh, DSM creation algorithm uh, is being contemplated. Uh, uh, we are working uh, closer on feature-based and multi-image correlator modifications that has been mentioned. True Ortho is, uh, uh, is also on our to-do list. It's present but in a truncated form. It needs to be improved. Uh, we will further use uh, uh, GPGPU. We will introduce a total one-button automation of uh, some workloads, some partial automation in 3D feature extraction process will be available soon. A uh, LIDAR-oriented module uh, may uh, be a new product of development, but no final decision has been made on that yet, but we're certainly thinking in such terms. Finally, uh, removing any limits to data set size is another possibility. And in terms of uh, interface, those of you who are aware of uh, Photomod, uh, you may see that now they're being integrated into one environment. So we're, we do plan to uh, incorporate them into one environment under one roof. OK, that, that's it. I will uh, moderate the master class tomorrow in the afternoon. Uh, we will uh, prominently display the signs telling you what exactly will be covered during the master class. And of course, don't hesitate. Feel free to ask any question. If you have any data of your own, you can bring it in and we'll import it and try to process it. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Questions? I'm a big fan of Rockers, but I can't by, but ask this question. What are your comments on the advantages of Photomod over Info, leaving the price issue aside? And uh, what pieces of advice could you give? How would you uh, reinforce these advantages to somebody who is uh, working with info but dreams about using photomod. Uh, leaving the price issue aside, that's quite relevant. Uh, it, we need to bear that in mind. These are two things that uh, cannot be compared. Info per se is something I, I like. I'm far from saying that I have a lot of experience using it. First off, here, we in Photomod, we have Russian language interface, we have Russian language technical support, and for the Russian setting, the Russian context, it's very important. On the technical support side, we are much more flexible, much faster, more responsive to customer feedback, including foreign requests. I had examples when people from Geodesy Bro uh, uh, told me that it's much more convenient uh, using Photomod. On the functionality side, our solver with its uh, graphical uh, features was something that I liked much better than what I saw there at, at some point. Furthermore, there is a lot, of, a lot of talk about space at info, which I'm not quite certain here, but we heard repeatedly that uh, they don't uh, treat uh, these matters with uh, seriousness. I mean, uh, uh, they are a niche uh, company. But the, again, that's just my, my private opinion. Uh, 
When I visited China in uh, December, uh, they told me that for UAVs, Infa, uh, they had projects. And they told me that uh, Infa failed them for such projects. At the Trimble uh, exhibition uh, uh, stand, they showed the stretch out program. I keep uh, mixing these things up, out and in. So info is not suitable for UAVs, but this one is uh, for specific uh, UAV with uh, one uh, particular camera. And everything that relates to Russian classificators, uh, we need, for example, one to two thousand scale. How do we go about it? Uh, we import what is needed, and they cannot do it. I didn't mean to be wrong. I expect an avalanche of critique in my direction uh, regarding UAV application, but again, that's what I think about it. <laughs> you see, I'm having big problems. What is uh, so special with UAV photogrammetry? It's exactly the same as the rest of photogrammetry. You have smaller image size, but the rest is the same. What's the problem? Why do you call it, uh, from a software point of view, UAV photogrammetry? But, but from an application, yes, but it doesn't need a special but, software. But for, for some reason, for some reason, every software package makes some special tools for UAV. Yes, everybody knows that photogrammetry is the same, images are small, but anyway, Everybody is trying to make some special tools. That's for business uh, reason, not for technical <laughs> no, reasons. No, no. I think that the first, well, the first reason is orientation, very big angles. The second reason, camera. Uh, well, bad cameras, very bad uh, measurements on board, no ground control points. No, 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 no. I no, think no, the no. software you should be ready. You need ground control points also for uh, UAV I mean, I mean, very very typical situation. Uh, so the software must be ready to process this kind of data. Bad radiometry, bad geometry, bad everything. And uh, by the way, on the very beginning, like two years ago, we always said, okay, photo mode is ready for UAV, no problem, give us the data. But on the, well, third or fourth sample, we got the idea that we have to make modifications. And I think that it's not just because of photo mode. I think this is a general thing. The difference exists. <laughs> exists in processing. Of course, well, mathematics is the same. <laughs> well, mathematics is... Where is Mr. Mikhailov? He is not here already. <laughs> but, but, he has, but he has exactly your opinion, by the way. But <laughs> from one point, it's... Uh, well, it's not about mathematics, but no, I don't. Well, I don't think so. I suggest uh, we take this discussion over into the lobby when the session is over.